Matt, are you there? We've got, we're, we're on stage, but they'll edit us off. Um, I'll bring on Angelos on to say hey. Hey, Angelos, how are you? Hello, good. Good to see you. Yes, uh, wish he was in person. Yeah. The, uh, remember, we're, we're on if anybody's joining us yet, but I just wanted to thank you guys. Angelos has been great collaborating with you and on the Q and a, that's great, Matt. Um, if Chris joins, I'll just bring him up on stage. Um, I, he's got the link and, um, I'll just, you know, at the top of the hour here, we got, <coughs> you can see the red counter. So try and wrap up by 10, 10, uh, 20 after, and then, um, uh, we'll leave time for Q and a, cause I'm imagining you're going to get some. Okay. And then, um, you know, that'll give us enough time to go a little long or whatever. And, um, but uh, anyway, um, thanks so much, Matt. Uh, Angelos, I'll drop you off here. I'm going to, we got about a minute and a half here, Matt. Um, uh, looking forward to this. And um, let's see here, anything else? I, it was unusual. Uh, Tim and on, Andreas noted that they, this year they had gotten everything done early. It's it's not the same experience going from um, session to session as it usually is at Foster G where you have to dash down the hall and you're tripping over the legs of people who are there working on their presentation uh, that's coming right up. You know, that's, you know, you, that's how you get your yeah. cardio, cardio at Foster G hurdling, you know, um, anyway. Uh, we've got 30 seconds. Do you have a slide? Do you have slides? Yes. Do you want to start? You can go ahead and, and start sharing those and I can bring those up here. Ah, here's Chris. Yo. Hey, Chris, we're on, we're on stage live. So, um, but they'll edit us this intro out, but man, if you want to start your share, then I can just, I'll drop off and I'll, do you want me to have you both up at the same time, or do you want me to just have you up, Matt, and then Chris, or how do you guys want to do that? Uh, you can have us both up. Okay. I mean, if Chris is all right with that. All right. Well, we're on. So we are very, very fortunate to have a wonderful presentation on the state of Stack, everybody. Um, I'll let Matt introduce this with Matt Hansen from Element 84, who works with NASA, USGIS, uh, the U.S. Geological Survey, I should say, many private companies. Um, who's been involved with the development of Stack. And then we're super fortunate to have Chris Holmes from Planet, uh, key uh, advocate for uh, Stack developer. And so we're looking forward to a great presentation. I'll drop off here and Matt, I'll let you share whenever you, um, I'll bring it on up. Great, well, thank you, Eddie, and hello everyone. So today we're gonna be talking about the state of Stack and I'm going to start off uh, just giving a quick primer in case you saw a stack and you don't exactly necessarily know what it is, uh, but we'll be spending most of our time talking about the recent developments. Uh, this here is a bunch of different geospatial portals. And really stack came about because the experience with each one of these, which is usually backed by a separate API, is completely different. And there really was no standardized way of getting to this data. Uh, each data provider had its own unique way of doing it. And so the stack specification was really born out of that nece necessity. And there are two stack specifications. And what they're for is for describing geospatial data. That's the stack spec. And then searching that data through the stack API spec in order to be able to really support scalable and reproducible use of that data. Stack is a series of linked JSON files at its core. Uh, the key thing here is that they're linked, and so this is crawlable, which means that it's indexable into a database so that it can then be searched. The fields within those JSON files is standardized. So cloud cover is called EO cloud cover, for instance, and it goes from zero to 100. Um, and then the API used for querying is based on the OGC API features extension. So in Stack, we have three main entities. We have catalogs, collections, and items. A catalog is just a container that will link to different collections or items. And a collection is a way to group similar items together. 
the concept is flexible so that you could have, um, for instance, post-disaster response data from a bunch of different sensors. That could be a collection. Uh, in most cases, it's from a particular sensor, uh, but really it could be any way that you want to divide up your data. Um, there's some unique benefits here in Stack. For instance, the file geometry versus data geometry issue. Uh, if you just have a whole bunch of files that are broken up into tiles, you may not be aware that the data within that tile it doesn't actually cover the whole um, the whole tile. And so if you search for an AOI on the right-hand side of the scene, you actually won't end up getting anything. And so this geometry that's stored in these stack items is the actual data location. So that's, a, that's an important thing to point out. Um, also, stack has a really useful ability to, because of the linkages, to be able to track data provenance. Uh, and this is also something that has been sorely missing from uh, the science community and using using data is being able to point back to the sources of those data. The StackSpec website is the main site uh, for um, for learning about Stack. Um, it's currently being uh, it'll, it'll be redone with a lot more tutorials. Uh, but if you're just getting started, that would be the first place to start. Uh, this here is just a Stack catalog. It's just being rendered in JSON in the browser. This is the planetary computer. Um, in here, I'm just following links through the catalog in order to explore the data. Here, we're looking at the Aster collection. Um, and here we have more links. And then ultimately, items have assets. Uh, these are the actual underlying data files. You might ask, uh, well, what is this? How does OGC fit into this? The OGC standards, did, didn't they kind of already do this? And here's a list of the new OGC API standards. Um, and if you're familiar with all of these and familiar with Stack, you, you understand that there's, act, there's a gap that was missing here. Uh, OGC APIs are for serving up data in a standardized way, but it doesn't actually describe what that underlying data is. And so those, what those fields are called. And so it's really um, filling a gap in these OGC APIs. However, we do use the OGC API features standard for serving up that data. So the RESTful API is standard, um, but, what, but Stack actually ends up describing those underlying metadata values. And this is the uh, Stack uh, API, what it looks like here. Um, there's all the OGC features endpoints, uh, and then all we do is add in some specific stack endpoints, such as the root endpoint is a stack catalog, and we have a search endpoint for being able to do cross-collection searches. So the current status of Stack, so Stack started uh, just about four years ago, and here's a little timeline showing when the sprints happened. Uh, we had various sprints with the OGC API folks. Um, and then the last one was a virtual sprint. Um, and we released a version one just this past summer. Uh, so yeah, the whole timeline is just, just under four years. Uh, so the Stack Spec 1, that was released in May. The Stack API spec is currently on a beta 3. Uh, and the reason that isn't has not been released yet is really because the OGC API feature spec is not in a final version. And so we've really been tracking um, and aligning with that. There are a variety of open source projects um, and contributors. And there's, I don't have a good number of the actual number of items that are available in public catalogs, uh, but we estimate it's at least a million items anyway. Stack wouldn't have been possible without all the sponsors. Planet, Radiant Earth, and Microsoft have been three of the main key contributors to development, not just in during the over the course of the development of the specification, but also sponsoring and um, providing resources to development of the Stack ecosystem as well. A quick note on extensions. So here we have the simple core spec. This is a stack item. Uh, as you can see, there's really not a whole lot of fields. The main thing is a geometry. Uh, there's some properties which aren't enumerated here, but 
is really only a handful of those. Date, time, and geometry are the main fields. Uh, and this is what makes up the core. The idea being that a core spec is stable. It shouldn't change very often. Um, and hopefully a year from now, we'd still actually be on a 1.0 spec. So how do we add new capabilities to Stack? We do that through Stack extensions. And these are, uh, for the most part, they're all collected at a GitHub organization called Stack Extensions. And they don't have to be. Somebody could publish their own Stack extension, but there's a nice template repository there uh, laying out um, what it is that you need to provide for extension and uh, a way to host the JSON schema so that they can be validated along with the rest of the extensions. The most notable extensions at this point, I think, are uh, the SAR and EO extensions for describing spectral bands and, and SAR specific fields for that data. So those really describe the underlying data. Uh, and then we have the projection and the raster extensions, which provide really useful information, which you'll see later uh, on pro providing actual underlying metadata about the data itself, such as the shape of the array and the geotransform of that, uh, the no data value, the data type. And these aren't useful for searching data, but uh, which was Stack's primary goal, but they're really useful for being able to then use the data in, in a scalable uh, workflow without having to hit the data itself all the time. So now you can get everything about the data if these extensions are provided in the catalog. One of the reasons why Stack has really been successful is the adoption, uh, the adoption of it. Um, even early on, organizations were adopting the use of Stack because it really did fit a need that wasn't there. So we have a bunch of different government organizations using it. NASA has something called CMR. It's common metadata repository. Uh, and uh, they've been using that for, for several years, and it's all the data from all the different NASA DACs. And CMR stack is a proxy server allowing a, a user to use all the uh, stack ecosystem tools to be able to search and access NASA data. USGS has recently released uh, Landsat Collection 2 and also the ARD data for Landsat. Uh, and this is all available through a publicly accessible Stack API as well. Uh, perhaps one of the more interesting and unexpected use cases here is the Astrogeology Department in USGS is actually using Stack uh, for, for describing data for Mars, Europa, and the Moon. And they have a Stack catalog up. Um, and. Uh, really great to see these sorts of unexpected use cases. The Meteorological Service of Canada is using it to describe climate and weather data. And we also have a whole lot of commercial adoption. Just a couple of days ago, I tweeted uh, to get some feedback and, and get some commercial companies to, to weigh in on, on how they're using it. And we got quite a few responses. We see a lot of uh, small SAT companies, so Planet, Capella, Hydrosat. Um, they're all using it as well as downstream users uh, with companies that are um, standing up frameworks for processing. And they're either using Stack internally to manage their own uh, data sets uh, and in uh, often in some cases also exposing those APIs to customers. Um, Unfolded AI is one company that has a really great, um, has this Unfolded Studio application and um, they're using Stack. They can integrate directly with, uh, with Stack tile sets in order, to, in, in order to ingest that data. There's a great little GIF here showing some 3D modeling, bringing in tiles and, and bringing in DMs and laying that over. Uh, Teradu is another company uh, that has stood up a this disasters chart platform and uh, have really been doing some some great things there. Uh, everything is done on demand um, and with dynamic tiling, so they can bring in 
data that's being described by stack and, and display that data and, and process it uh, for rapid response to natural disasters. Uh, for a more complete picture and listing of different catalogs and software, Stack Index is a great website uh, for indexing all of the different stack catalogs out there uh, as well as software and tools. So this is another great website to go to if you're just getting started in Stack to see what is available out there. Uh, now I'm going to uh, transfer this over to Chris, who's going to talk perhaps about the most coolest stuff about Stack, which is the great ecosystem of tools that have been created over the last few years. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, you want to go to the next slide? Um, so yeah, so the with Stack, we've made a real concerted effort to focus on implementation and have the spec follow the implementation. So kind of first go for working code um, and then see what, what works out of that. And so there's really a pretty incredible amount of projects that are using Stack, and we'll, we'll blitz through them quickly. One of the main locuses of um, activity is the Stack Utils GitHub repository, where you can find a lot of the core projects. There's also things outside of that, but for projects that kind of don't have a super clear home, want to be associated with Stack, we put them um, in the Stack Utils uh, repository so you can browse there and, and see a lot of the latest Stack activity. Next slide. Um, so yeah, key is validation. Um, you know, we don't want people to have to try to figure out, is this valid? We want to put tooling that makes it super easy for them to um, just you know, let you know if this is valid. Um, and yeah, even online tools like StackLint that SparkGeo put up. Um, so you can just post something online or point at a, an online catalog and have it tell you what's wrong with it. Next. Um, PyStack is really foundational library. Uh, we aspire to have every language have great stack support, but Python emerged as the first one, which makes a lot of sense with its strength in the geospatial and scientific worlds. Um, so it, PyStack is the core of many pieces, uh, providing the model of stack and then um, building many layers on top of it. Next slide. Uh, like PyStack client. Um, so PyStack is just the core reading of stack. PyStack client gives you search of APIs, um, cool command line tools like this calendar that lets you see where there's captures. Next one. Uh, and then there's a bunch of API servers as well um, in different languages. Um, so Stack Server uh, is Elastic, Franklin is Scala, Stackfast API is Python. There's another PyGeo API kind of started from the OGC world um, and now supporting Stack, Staccato with Java. Um, and yeah, lots of capabilities there and, and options to pick from. Uh, and Stack Tools is a, a cool layer on top of PyStack that uh, adds a bunch more modules uh, to kind of do more. So it's got command line tools um, to really manipulate Stack. Um, it's got, yeah, a bunch of just extra capabilities that pull in more libraries. We wanted to keep PyStack very nice and tight and not a lot of dependencies, but in Stack Tools, more dependencies can be added. So like Rasterio to do analysis. And then it's also this ecosystem of converters. Um, so instead of, you know, everybody writing their own Landsat converter or lone Aster converter, uh, we gather the code here and then anybody can use that as a library that converts that data set. So it's just this continually growing set of things of code that converts from the standard, you know, formats into stack and does it once. Next. Next. Uh, and then stack browser uh, version three is um, being developed by Matthias Moore. Uh, he's been a, a key stack contributor for much of the spec. Um, and this has been a project yeah, that gone through a couple of versions. Um, and the main thing it does, it, it gives you this complete rendered online view of from any record. Um, and it's cool with the power of cloud optimized GeoTIFF. Um, you know, you can see these slippy maps. If there's a cloud optimized GeoTIFF, then you can actually use Stack Browser to zoom in, browse, but there's kind of no moving parts except that, that core stack record that then powers the whole browser. So it lets you get this kind of visual online view of any data that's in stack and gives a win to any provider to kind of instantly get this, um, this nice view of their data. 
side. Um, and that's the new version is powered by um, some leaflet plugins um, that are being worked on in a beta. Um, so let you get those core stack uh, layers in leaflet. Um, and then, yeah, you can even render uh, the cloud optimized geotiffs um, server side or even client side using some of the latest um, uh, leaflet plugins um, from Daniel Dufour. Next one. Um, and then, yeah, it's been cool to also see kind of existing projects start to support Stack. So T Tyler is really this kind of next generation um, web Tyler, um, and uh, it supports Stack both for input and output. So it gives it a little Stack endpoint to any data that's in there. Um, uh, and then Restereo added some some Rio Stack tools, um, so you can just generate that Stack, you know, kind of that core metadata about it. Um, you know, it's not the full thing, but gets you started to add more fields in. Um, and then there's some really cool workflows that are possible. I think there's some tutorials online um, of using T Tyler with Stack Fast API and you know, paired with a Stack API so you can do a search and then render the results of that search in a map completely on the fly. Um, so yeah, like it's cool to see these like higher and higher level tools build on top of these like core concepts. Next one. And yeah, another one of those is Stack Stack where uh, you are able to, to treat these kind of core things that just, you know, the core stack just says, this is where data is. Stack Stack lets you treat a whole stack of data as um, a data cube and use it in an X array, but it loads it all on the fly. So you're able to, in Python, do much deeper manipulation in a kind of more scientific model, but it's backed by these core pieces underneath it. Um, and then Open Data Cube is in some ways similar and even a level above. Like Open Data Cube's been a, a mature product for, for many years to expose uh, yeah, these kind of cubes of data, but it's traditionally been backed by high performance computers that have particular formats in there. And now it's really cool because you can get all the functionality in that Open Data Cube and have it completely backed by a stack catalog because it's kind of this flexible backend that's, that's quite flexible. Next one. And then GDAL um, uh, has stack support as well. Um, this lets you kind of get this yeah, similar VRT, just like stack stack um, uh, of a whole set of data, just be able to treat it as a single layer in GDAL with, with very little work. Next. Um, and then, yeah, Rocket's a super cool front end client that lets you search for stack data in a catalog and, and interface with different APIs and, and dig into it more. Um, next slide. I think this might be it. Yeah, so that's the ecosystem. You want to take this next section, Matt? Or you want to... Sure, we'll do, yeah. Uh, OK, so just some notes on cloud providers, uh, because stack really um, works best if you have your data in the cloud. So just some notes on the major uh, computing platforms here. Microsoft has this new planetary computer, which there's been a whole uh, session on and uh, today. And uh, there's been some great examples. Um, it has a huge catalog of data that's continually being added to. Uh, Google Earth Engine has adopted Stack to describe their collections. Not all their items are in Stack because that's really not the way that Google Earth Engine works. It works on the concept of a collection. Um, uh, and, and so they have this uh, a, a stack catalog describing all of that. Uh, and then Earth on AWS, AWS has a public data sets program, uh, which is somewhat decent, really decentralized compared to the Microsoft approach where they're, really, they're taking a top-down approach, um, putting everything in a single API. The open data on AWS is uh, different companies can make data available and they essentially sponsor those data sets. Um, and so there is no central API. However, at Element, we have stood up Earth Search, and currently there's only the Sentinel 2 COG data set, which has proven to be pretty popular um, in it. Uh, but the hope is that going forward, as more of these companies create stack catalogs, that uh, they can be indexed into Earth Search. So there, there would be a, a central point where the users could, could search for different data. And here's just an example, another stack example of 
um, a Sentinel-2 item. Uh, a note on cloud native workflows. This is just a couple slides, uh, but I want to point out Pangeo uh, as the, as this sort of new way of doing everything in the, in the scientific world, where you have storage and you have your processing that happens next to the storage, next to the data, and then in the Python ecosystem has has really matured a lot in the last few years with doing being able to do parallel computing with Dask and these X arrays that were previously mentioned, like with Open Data Cube and Stack Stack. And then you do all this in a Jupyter notebook um, that is also most likely hosted next to next to the data next to your cluster as well. Um, and tomorrow I have uh, a talk at noon uh, that will show end-to-end -end examples on planetary computer and with and on AWS using using this really end-to-end -end starting from I have an area of interest and a date time and how do I actually get the data and then visualize it or perform some sort of calculations on it. So uh, what's next for Stack? Um, the next things that we have going on is there's this big web website refresh. We're going to be putting lots of tutorials and learning resources up. Uh, the Stack API 1.0 will be coming out, um, although that's tracking, again, with the OGC API features. Uh, we want to expand the different languages that are supported and, and get R in there, since that's really popular in data science. Um, and then also just continue to, to promote and do outreach of Stack. Uh, and, and um, I mean, we really envision a, a Stackified world where all the data, all the geospatial data in the world um, in, is in a Stack catalog, uh, which could really uh, enable the rise of geospatial search engines that uh, where um, it's as useful and uh, ubiquitous as, as web searches are now. So how can you help? Um, you can use Stack in the software that you work on. You can help more data sets to be exposed as Stack. The Stack Tools Library is a good place to start there. There's a bunch of different packages for different data sets. Uh, sponsoring, of course, is, is, always, uh, is always a great thing to do and spread the word. And I think that's all we got. We just went over by a couple minutes. Okay. Um, I, I do want to answer a couple questions. Matt, you might want to go back two slides. Um, we had this question. Um, I can't think of anybody better than Chris to answer it. If we have Stack, why do we have OGC API records or vice versa? Yeah, so I've last few months have spent a bunch of time with the OGC API records uh, team. And to me, there's sort of two levels of Stack. And Stack is really focused on the search of scenes, like of items, uh, of the kind of lower level stuff that goes into a collection. And then you can see OGC record is more that collection level search. And so what we're working on is kind of having OGC API records be about that collection level search, which then you could include uh, vector data sets as well. So, so Stack is pretty inclusive most data sets, but you know, like a, if you have a vector data set, that really should be a feature service. Um, so yeah, I've been doing work as this OGC visiting fellow to kind of unite these, um, to have a kind of clear um, equivalent in, in the OGC world of Stack, and then Stack sort of is an OGC collection. So. Like we haven't yet added collection search in Stack, where you can kind of search, oh, find Landsat, find Sentinel. Um, that is what belong at the kind of API records level. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't the crispest explanation, but but essentially, like like there are slightly different focuses, um, and we're kind of working to carve out like where Stack really shines, and then where Stack complements um, the records, and then have the Stack APIs directly use AG, OGC API records, just like we use OGC API features. Excellent. Well, I, I'll try and squeeze in one more question. Um, and then there's a couple more, Matt and Chris, if you would look in the Venulus uh, chat, you could maybe answer them. But Matt, go back to your next slide then, the the, the next subsequent slide here. Um, here, yeah. we had this question. Um, I work in a marketplace platform, so we don't own any of the data. How could we support this project? I want to just give you another chance to talk about how people can support Stack, and then we'll close out, and I'll let you answer the other questions in Venulus. Um, I mean, I can take this. The, I, the, as a marketplace, you actually are a platform. We're at a very good spot to support Stack, because if even if the data providers don't 
put the data in Stack, as you make your data available to your users, you can put Stack interfaces on top of that data. Uh, you know, we see a world where the providers are providing Stack, but um, yeah, lots of times just an intermediary who's who's providing a an interface on top of that. So yeah, as a marketplace, I would say try to make your data available to your users as Stack, even as you're you're bringing data through. I mean, you might have more direct connections, but um, yeah, try to support them and then advocate to your data providers, um, you know, of, mm -hmm. hey, it'd be great for our use of your data and for other users to use your data to have Stack. So um, yeah, just encouraging more and more implementations as well. Super. Chris, thanks so much for joining. Matt, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for this presentation. Um, I'm sorry we couldn't get to all the questions, but uh, we can, we'll try and answer those in the, the chat. Uh, afterwards. Thanks so much. We'll give you a couple minutes break and then we'll be back for one final uh, session here. Thanks a lot, guys.